everyone! Hamster Boy here, and today I got something a little different. Normally I don't really do vlog videos, but you know what? First time for everything, eh? And besides, I think this event was interesting enough to make a video of, so why not? So, a little bit of context. So for a while now, several years actually, actually nearly a decade, wow, time really flies. Anyway, point is, so for years now, I've been a part of an event called Steam Era, held every year on Labor Day weekend in Milton, Ontario, Canada. And essentially what it is, is a huge celebration for all things old-fashioned agriculture. From steam traction engines, old-fashioned diesel tractors, thrashing machines, balers, whole bunch of other machinery, stationary engines, just a bunch of all that cool stuff. And yeah. Big event. If you love real-life steampunk, it's the event for ya. But in addition to the main event, they also have a smaller event for club members called the Steamer of Pitnik. And this year was particularly interesting because one of the club members, Mr. Wayne Fisher, decided to host. And he has this massive building full of really interesting pieces of machinery from a whole bunch of steam traction engines to a steam boat to some narrow gauge railway equipment, to even some massive stationary engines for power production. So in this two part video, part one will be about what happened outside during the event, and part two will get a tour from Mr. Wayne Fisher himself, showing off his beautiful and extensive collection of machinery. So let's get started. Alright, so by the time we got there, activity was already happening. We can see here that they are trying to move a pallet with a bunch of junk on it so they can fire up the engine stuck in the bay. Unfortunately, Wayne skewers the skid a bit, but oh well. Gently does it. And there we go. So once they got the engines all steamed up and ready to go, they decided to put one engine onto what's called a baker fan. Essentially, a giant paddle wheel for air. Oh, he's George White. See, two people to belt up with him, you know. He's just so honored. It's hard to keep it on all so this power and control. <laughs> now, the way you transmit power using old-fashioned equipment like this is using large, flat leather belts. While it's handy in terms of being able to hook almost anything up to almost anything else, it does come with a big limitation that the two things you need to hook up must be perfectly aligned, else the belt will have a tendency to wander. This wandering motion can be accounted for using what's called a crowned pulley, 
Unfortunately, both the flywheel of the engine and the pulley of the baker fan are completely flat. So getting the alignment just right comes down to the skill of the driver. And here we see the engine hooked up and chuffing away happily. You can see clearly here how both the Baker fan and the flywheel of the engine are completely flat. Hear her chuff. Unfortunately, the alignment wasn't quite exact enough, and the belt came off to the inside. Oops. Here's some lovely slow mo of the engine working again. On the day, there were actually three engines that were fired up and steaming. This is the second one we'll meet today, and this one gave people rides. Hauling around this lovely wooden wagon here. You can see they actually store a bunch of extra firewood under the seats of the wagon in case they need to go long range, but Usually around here, they don't need that much firewood. The one nice advantage about this engine is it's got a nice roof on it, meaning that the driver and fireman are shaded from the sun. And upon the side of the cylinder, we see in big yellow letters, Sawyer Massey, Hamilton, Canada. Sawyer Massey was a very prominent maker of steam traction engines back in the day. After some time has passed, the engine was ready to go and a bunch of people were loaded up on the wagon. Unfortunately, they weren't quite ready enough and had to make a premature stop. Alright, with the problem resolved, we are ready to go! Quick apologies, I forgot to bring my good camera to this event, so I'm recording all of this on my phone. And the camera is right where I need to rest my finger, so if you occasionally see a random finger pop up, that's why. Sorry. I do love the sound of a steam engine working.
So of course, I simply could not pass up the opportunity to go for a ride on the wagon myself. And here we go! All right, quick warning, there might be a little bit of flickering from the sunlight passing through the trees. I tried to get rid of anything that was too intense, but just be aware there might be a little bit of flickering. Alright, quick disclaimer here. Technically, to get all the shots, the wagon had to take two laps. The first lap is the one I rode on, and then the second lap is the one where I got all the external third person shots. With that said, I don't think you need to see the engine go around two laps. So I decided to edit them together as if they were a single ride. Alright, a little bit of the behind the scenes here. In order to get all the shots of the engine running, I had to run ahead of the engine to get into position so I'm ready for when the engine passes. Unfortunately, the road here is very narrow with big thick trees on either side, meaning that I can't really safely pass the engine alongside. So I had to constantly run around and find other ways to get in front of the engine. Or a horse plows at is around two and a half to two and a quarter miles an hour. But when they first came out with these in the eighteen sixties, what speed should we make it go at? Well, we're going to use it for plowing. We'll make it the same speed as what the, they plow. It's so perfectly logical. Wow, that's Absolutely. pretty good. Yeah. yeah. So that's the speed you're going at. Wow. Plowing speed. Plowing speed. Pretty good. A happy accident is I got this beautiful shot of the engine through the trees. Problem is, I only barely got it. If I could redo this shot, I would. This shot is beautiful. Here we are approaching the Y intersection of the turnaround at the other end of the property.
thankfully, due to the fact it's a turnaround, to get a good shot, I just had to run the other way around the loop and get into position. Mind the tree. So if any of you guys are enjoying this wagon ride, I'll be uploading a full uncut version of the ride as a bonus video. Link to it in the description. the road was wide enough for me to walk alongside and I got this lovely shot of the engine running. Like with all steam engines, you occasionally need to feed the fire to keep her going. As we can see, the fuel of choice here is wood, although historically coal was also used as well. Yeah, lots of mixed tobacco. 
And here we are, back at start. This shot also provides us a beautiful overview of all the equipment out front. Unfortunately, I would have kept following it further, but I got stopped by this engine being in my way. For a brief moment, you can see in the background a tent was set up. It is a picnic after all, and inside there was a lot of lovely food. Sadly, I did not get any shots of us eating the food. Suffice it to say, the food was delicious. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I got on it and then it has been that to sit up in uh cupola on the uh we, 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 got, we, got, we got on it in Waterloo and went all the way to St. Jacobs. That was a blast. Yeah. That was a real blast. And what's a steam engine without a little peep peep? Alright, not part of the event at all, but something really interesting that caught my eye. One of the members brought along a really fancy old-fashioned car, and I couldn't help but get some video of it. And if you're wondering, yes I did get permission to film it. Thanks again, fellas. So as the day progressed, and we've had our fun outside, it was time to move on to the main tour, where Wayne Fisher shows off his fabulous collection. Again, I'll cover this in much more detail in part 2. Oh, well, yeah, you well, let me check. My dad indicated he wanted to, but... Is he gonna be able? To, you can bring a chair with him. We might do that. Where are those Dutch people? They wanted to do the tour. Yeah, go do some wrangling, Wayne. Ah, herding cats. The time-honored tradition of being a host. Fast forwarding to later in the day, after the tour was done, we moseyed along outside. You can just barely see the spread of food on various tables in this main room. Again, this is my first time vlogging, and I wanted to keep the focus mostly on the machinery, but in hindsight, I probably should have got some establishing shots of the food as well. Here we got yet another engine steamed up and slowly turning over the baker fan. Unfortunately, someone decided to park the truck here to load it up, not realizing the tractor with the wagon came back round again and needed to come through. Where the hell did he go? And then, as the day progressed, 
things started to wind down. People started heading home, food was packed up, and engines were put away back into their sheds to be steamed down for the night. It's incredible just how much the engine shimmies back and forth as it steams along. And with a little bit of finessing, they get her into the bay. And to close things out, I'll leave you with this shot of behind the main building, where they are building a full-scale, three-foot, narrow-gauge railroad. And there you have it, folks. Ah, oh, man, that was just so much fun. I really enjoyed it. Uh, thank you to everyone who put on the show. It was absolutely wonderful. So glad everyone could be out. Weather was beautiful. And remember, this is only part one. In part two, we'll be getting a tour by Mr. Wayne Fisher himself, showing off his extensive collection of machines. So, look forward to that. Anyway, this has been Hamster Boy, and have a great one, folks. Take care.